I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Alfredo Torero, the COO and co-founder of Into the Block. Alfredo, thanks so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. If you could please kick off the interview by giving a bit of background into how you got into the cryptocurrency space, analytics, and how Into the Block was formed. Sure. So I started in crypto around uh, late 2016. I was actually I got into crypto actually through Ethereum and not Bitcoin like like many people. So I was actually uh, looking into smart contract technology for a different uh, matter, and I started reading about Ethereum. Got very interested. Put some personal money into it when the price was very very low. That turned out to be a great investment. I must admit I sold that very early just because I never had that kind of performance in such a short time. So I kind of missed a lot of the upside there. But uh, eventually I ended up uh, joining forces with my, some partners that when we launched a small crypto fund. Um, about a year and a half ago, I met uh, my co-founder and currently uh, the CEO uh, and CTO of Into the Block, Jesus Rodriguez, and he came with the idea. Well, first of all, he came with a very interesting uh, and mixed background in both technology and finance. So uh, he was a distinguished engineer at Microsoft and then built quant systems for hedge funds uh, when that industry was, the quant industry was taking off in Wall Street. Uh, and Jesus, he says he's been investing in blockchain technologies for a while. His background is mainly in AI. But he had this idea, this thesis that became the founding thesis of Into the Block, which is, if this asset class is really going to grow and become me meaningful, it needs uh, better intelligence than what's mm -hmm. other because that's what's, what's happened with other asset classes in, the, in history, right? Uh, additionally, it's the first time uh, in history that we have an asset class, a financial asset class, um, that is natively and 100% digital. So that uh, opens up the opportunity for a new form of analysis that wasn't available before in other asset classes. So with that in mind, we started into the block uh, to provide this sort of new analytics to the market. Um, and, and here we are. That's great. Well, thank you for the intro, Alfredo. And now into the block as a product, you use machine learning and statistical analysis to deliver insights into cryptocurrency. Now, have you guys built something unique and specific, specific you know, some secret intel that gives you a competitive advantage over uh, other data analytics companies in cryptocurrency? Yeah, so machine learning is a very nascent uh, field within crypto. So some of the applications that we're using are already in the product. Some are in the roadmap or not part of the product yet. And we're using to do, uh, let's say, some research uh, efforts with, with companies like Coindesk, uh, with whom we have collaborated uh, in the past. So uh, one of these examples is we have a very popular indicator called the in and out of the money, which essentially tells you for any asset, uh, you know, any address holding, let's say Bitcoin, for in the case of Bitcoin, uh, whether they they would you know gain uh, if they sold today or they would lose. So that's you know borrowing from from options uh, uh, lingo. Uh, we call it the in and out of the money. That one uses uh, machine learning models uh, to come up with cluster of addresses uh, next to price. Um, uh, once I haven't been productized yet, we have a very, very large effort on the anonymization of the blockchain. And what that means, uh, to give you a concrete example of what we have done, spend a like four to five months uh, building this machine learning classifier mm -hmm. to identify exchanges on the blockchain. Uh, that will, that's the, the effort I was mentioning that we, uh, were, where we collaborated with Coindes in a research report for liquidity within exchanges mm -hmm. uh, using the data we were seeing and also uh, that will eventually become part of the product where we can, you know, take what we have today and sort of identify which players are exchanges and, and which players are not. That's great. And when did you first start? Did you use these any algorithms when you had your crypto fund before Into the Block? And how long has Into the Block been running now? Mm -hmm. No, so so the crypto fund, uh, so the, some of the original partners of the crypto fund, we became part of Into the Block, but the fund, we had closed the fund actually before starting Into the Block, and it was a discretionary fund, so we didn't use this, this sort of uh, algorithms. Um, we unfortunately have not met Jesus, our, our CEO, yet. Uh, so, so we started building the company in around uh, November 2018, so a little over a year now. We put together a team of, we're about 15 now, mainly data scientists and engineers. And uh, we're running a pretty large infrastructure for, for just having a year on. So we have about, we're hosting around three terabytes of data and growing at 20 gigabytes per day. Mm -hmm. So we have oh. put together this whole infrastructure and now we, we, we launched uh, V1 very recently. 
Mm -hmm. That's great. And you have different types of indicators. I think you have at least four different types of indicators um, for different kinds of analytics. Can you talk about the different kinds that you have in the system? Sure. So the way we have divided uh, our indicators, we have over 50 indicators today, uh, and we have divided those in categories, which th this might change in the future. But if you go into the block today, we have five categories. Uh, the first three are mainly based on on-chain data, but what? But it's not only just just on-chain data. We inject other data sources like price to come up to run these machine learning models on top of that and come up with our indicators. So the five categories today are. Uh, fi what we call financial, which is that mix. The, the in and out of the money example is one of those uh, of using um, blockchain data and, and price data uh, to come up with indicators. We we have uh, one section entirely just for network indicators like hash rate. Uh, we just launched UTXO indicators as well uh, and, and, and others. Uh, we have another one called ownership in which we basically segment the quote unquote capital stack of a token. So we say with everyone who holds that token, uh, and we segment that in two ways. One, uh, by concentration. So we see who are the largest holders and whether the token is distributed or centralized or, or why not. And the other one is by time held. So is it, you know, a bunch of passive investors holding this asset or, or is it more, you know, may, you know trading uh, frequently? Mm -hmm. uh, and lastly, we have more off-chain indicators like exchange, you know, exchange data. We just uh, recently, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we launch uh, that, cat that category is called order book data. So basically taking order books from exchanges mm -hmm. uh, and coming up with analytics that we believe are pretty unique to into the block. Um, and lastly, social, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, is completely obviously off, off chain data, but mm -hmm. uh, some of our users were, were asking for it. So we, we tried to do something original there. Yeah, that's great. And it's very interesting that users were requesting the, the social and the off chain analytics. And I'm curious, how much importance do you believe social and uh, and the order books and, and off-chain data um, is 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 there a, a lot of weight on that into how it may affect the future prices of the assets or not as much as on-chain? Look, uh, at into the blog, we believe uh, that an investor should look at everything, right? They should have mm -hmm. different data points and make their own decisions, their own mm -hmm. come up with their own strategies. But the more data there is available, the better. Now, when we originally launched, uh, we sort of did not look at social too much. Uh, two reasons. One, there were some people doing interesting things there. Uh, and two, we believe, honestly, I have to admit, we believed at the time that it was, you know, maybe overhyped a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then we started listening to our customers, uh, which is not only, you know, individual investors, but also partners that are large institutions. And they said, look, uh, give us something on, on social. So we, we came up with Again, what I believe are some some interesting indicators there mm -hmm. that using machine learning as well to uh, come up with like the key topics on the news of the day um, and other things related to sentiment analysis. For the exchange data, what we do is uh, we we're sort of combining some on-chain data as well when we show you the order book. So, for example, uh, we have one that is market depth, which is just a typical. You know, this is the price, and these are you know different different prices. What are the bids, and, and and the ask on the other side? But we also tell you so at, the, at those price ranges, this is what's being let's say uh, offered in exchanges. But also, we know that on the blockchain there were these amount of addresses that bought at that price, so they may come and sell just to mm -hmm. to break even. So yeah. sort of like combining those two pieces of those those two data sources basically to come up with something original. Yeah, that's great. And is this all surrounding Bitcoin or do you go into the depths of all of the lower market cap cryptocurrencies as well? Currently, we're supporting about 700 assets. Uh, that's we, we cover, I think last time I checked was uh, 13 blockchains and the tokens that run on top of them. So obviously mm -hmm. having the Ethereum blockchain, we provide data for, for ETH, but also for, for tokens that, that, mm -hmm. that run on top of Ethereum. Wow. And how are you guys getting this information to the people that need it the most? Is it just direct to consumers or have you made a lot of big partnerships to distribute it widely? Yeah, so that's a two-part question. So in terms of delivery, the, the delivery is basically our website, which uh, we have put a lot of effort in the, in the UI and the user experience uh, because we want this data to be uh, digestible, let's say understandable by the average investor. And we don't want just the, you know, the super uh, educated trader. Uh, mm -hmm. sophisticated, I may say. 
Um, so, so, so in our website, we have all these indicators in a way that is, that, is, that they're easy to understand. Now, how we get those users to come to our site, we decided to partner with the top brands in crypto, uh, where those users are today. And mm -hmm. that's essentially, uh, three buckets, right? Uh, exchanges, uh, data providers and, and news sites. So, uh, we have around 20 partners, uh, before December, we had an open beta, but we just closed that. And so we have a premium product. And through our partners, you get access to our free indicators. So recently, we've been uh, rolling them out, essentially one one per week since since the start of the year. So now you can find our data in uh, Bitcoin is uh, Crypto Slay News BTC. So mainly uh, those are new sites. Coin Gecko is already live as well. Um, and in February, we're going to be launching um, in exchanges such as. Uh, eToro X, Bitstamp, and other data providers. The top data providers, we have relations with all of them. So we're going to be launching in uh, CoinMarketCap, uh, CryptoCompare, and, mm -hmm. and Welcome Gecko is already there. Wow. Well, that sounds like great partnerships to have. Um, and Yeah, we're very proud. And, and you know, uh, our yeah. partners have been great. And, and we're really looking forward to, to rolling all of them out. That's amazing. And are you using this intel uh for any internal funds or you're just using it um you know obviously if you have the the secret inf information and the secret sauce uh, why not use it for yourselves as well sure we're getting that question uh a lot lately especially because we announced that probably for the end of this quarter we're going to have a chapter on predictions uh for mm -hmm. price uh it's essentially a directional prediction not necessarily telling you exactly where the price mm -hmm. is going to be within an hour uh but the, the the quick answer is no we don't we don't have a, our own fund uh mainly because first we decided to focus on being you know the, hopefully the best company in, in the data analytics space for for crypto mm -hmm. uh and building a fund requires a whole different kind of yeah. one focus and two uh infrastructure right you need uh, not only to raise yeah. the capital for that but also you know build strategies, risk, have risk management, portfolio management, uh, back mm -hmm. testing. So it's a whole different kind of infrastructure uh, and know-how that you have to have. Definitely. I, I completely agree. And it's great to stay focused. And it sounds like your team has uh, quite the platform already. Um, and I'm guessing that you guys have quite a few amount of users. Um, are you looking at expanding more, like in terms of the product, you're, you're constantly building in more indicators um, or what do users have to look forward to? Sure, we are constantly uh, launching uh, new indicators and, and, and new categories like the ones I was mentioning. So uh, every week, we're, so last week we launched that uh, UTXO data that I was mentioning before. Uh, this week uh, is, we're gonna be launching, uh, so that in and out of, of the money indicator has become so popular that we're doing like some, we're launching related indicators to that. Uh, and, and later this quarter, we're going to be launching a new chapter on futures. Uh, we believe that's where that's going to be a large part of the crypto uh, industry uh, in 2020. Uh, and hopefully that chapter uh, in predictions as well later on. That's great. And what would you say is some of the biggest challenges that you may foresee as you continue to grow into the block? Yeah, there are a few. I think uh, we are very focused, again, that example that I was giving earlier on the anonymization of, of the blockchain. It's been a, it's been quite an undertaking. We uh, we spent, again, like I said, like four months uh, with a couple of our machine learning guys completely focused on that. And we want to take it to the next level and, and, you know, not only identifying exchanges, but coming up with models that identify, okay, this is a hedge fund or an OTC mm -hmm. desk. And, and that's quite difficult to do, but again, we're here to to tackle on those on those difficult uh, tasks. So so hopefully we'll get it done. Awesome. Well, all the best in that. And if there are traders or investors that are looking to learn more information, uh, get into the subscription so they can get your indicators. What's the best way for them to learn more information? The best way, yeah, obviously go to to our website, which is uh, into the blog .com. You can subscribe there for a seven day free trial and get access to all our indicators and, and try the platform. There's also uh, on the site uh, a, a section called resources where we have a, a couple of videos for each one of the indicators in the platform where you can see, you know, how we build them and, and what how you can use them as a trader. Um, and lastly, I would really recommend going to our medium publication. Uh, our team is publishing around two to three articles a week based on data that we are seeing that is available in the platform or that we have, you know, other efforts uh, internally and we and we publish them there. 
uh so so it's a really great source and that's uh medium.com slash into the block Great. Thank you so much, Alfredo. I'll leave those links in the description box below. That's all the time Thank that we you. have for the interview today, but I appreciate you taking the time to be on the show, and let's follow up in the near future. Thank you for having me, Ashton, and, and all the best to you as well.